Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, today I'm coming to y'all with another segment of four lessons we could learn from. Uh, today we'll be doing this piece on Wyatt Passet, aka the Oxy God. Now, a little backstory to get some of you familiar with who the Oxy God is. He's a 22 year old from Santa Ana, California, who was sentenced to 17 years in federal prison for selling counterfeit oxycodone pills on the dark web. Uh, under the username Oxygard, as well as he laundered money, uh, had possession of a firearm while being a felon back in 2019. And yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. Oh, and not to mention, those same pills were actually laced with fentanyl. And I'm actually surprised, well, not really, because y'all know how I go. But I'm surprised that all he received was 17 years. Yeah, yeah. He sold, <laughs> he was, listen, he was a convicted felon prior. Uh, he sold drugs prior and also have a same repeat of the same offense. And this time it was laced with fentanyl, a, a, a opioid that is killing, literally killing people by the hundreds of thousands, right? And all he received was 17 years. Now, some of y'all, I mean, y'all may see, y'all may sit there and y'all be like, well, 17 years is a long time. Yeah, it is a long time. But also, there's people who have got 20 years, 30 years. Life for lesser charges than that. I mean, like I said, people are dying left and right due to opioid crisis. I mean, the opioid crisis, and such as guys like himself making these fake pills is playing a big part in that. Now, investigators say that they've been watching these guys since the end of 2017 because it wasn't just him. Now, they actually had their eye on him first, and in the midst of watching him, he led them to two other co defendants named Duck Cow. <laughs> so his name is D-U-C-C-A-O I don't know But he's 22 years old He resided in um, Orange County And Isaiah Suarez Who was 23 of Newport Beach Now the three were suspected of building an oxycodone enterprise In Orange County To sell the pills online all across the United States All of that came to a halt when Pasek was arrested in 2018 Now Cal or Cal, however you want to say his name, and Suarez was sentenced to 87 months and 37 months in prison first, and then later on towards the ending of 2019, Wyatt Pasek was sentenced to 17 years in federal prison. Now, investigators labeled their organization deadly, and Pasek was given way more time based off his leading role in the case. Not to mention, this was his fourth, fourth drug conviction. So the judge basically felt that it wasn't more of a mature issue with him. It was more so of a choice and he knew exactly what he was doing. Now, like I said earlier, with that last case being his fourth conviction pertaining to drugs, especially at the level that this case was, I don't know how he was able to only receive 17 years, man. I said it earlier, some of y'all think 17 years is a long time, and rightfully so, but he's 22, so he'll still be able to get out and see the light of day when he gets out, uh, yeah, when he gets out, I think he's going to be like 39, so he's still got a chance at life. If I'm not mistaken, I thought they had the three-strike law out there in um, California, right? I could be wrong. If anybody know, let me know in the comments if that rule is actually in effect, but if I'm not mistaken... They do have a three-strike law out there in California where no matter what you do, if you get like three felony offenses, I think you have automatic life. Some create somebody told me that. I'm not sure. If y'all know in the comments, please let me know. Um, but like I said, he's lucky because he wasn't supposed to see the light of day, man. He's supposed to get a more hefty sentence. But it is what it is. Y'all know what's going on. Now, anyway, now that y'all a little caught up, let's get straight into it. But first, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, man. Join one of the Lydia's gangs, man. Not them gang, man. We here. All right. Now, lesson number one, y'all. Distance yourself away from anybody that is too loud. Now, this right here shouldn't even be a lesson because this should be common sense. But more and more, I'm starting to realize that common sense isn't so common. Now, for all y'all that don't know, right? You can literally have nothing to do with a friend of yours lifestyle. Whether it's a family member or a friend, that family member or friend could be into selling heavy drugs or heavy scam or whatever it is, whatever it is they're into. And you could just be a regular citizen going to work every day, minding your business. 
But do you know that as long as you're in the picture with that individual or have a text message with that individual or a part of their call log and you could be tied into a conspiracy case. Crazy, right? That's how the law works. <laughs> like, I think a lot of these laws need to be updated because a lot of them is outdated and whatever the case may be, but that's how it goes. And I bring that up because in this case, the loud one was Wyatt Pasek. Hmm. He was being flashy, right? He's being flashy. He ran Lamborghinis, Corvettes. He got a condo. He's posting in it with all types of girls. He throwing money around. The whole nine yards. Meanwhile, the two other guys were keeping a low, low, low profile. And had it not been for Wyatt, they actually would have been under the radar. But you know, Peter pays for Paul when it comes to the law. And this is why when you out there in the streets... And you see a man's doing the most Sometimes you gotta check him Like yo listen bro You wildin' right now <laughs> Like relax You are making it way too hot Like we out here in the streets You do ah uh, ah uh. Some of y'all be too scared To let your own mans know That he's wildin' But the same dude That you scared to talk to Could be the reason That the whole operation crumble So my advice is this If you gotta If you gotta do You out there getting money with And you see him doing the most Let him know Tap him on the shoulder Yo listen we gotta you you bugging, cause or else it could be all of y'all sitting in the cell next. So be mindful, man. And like I said, that's pretty much it. Make sure y'all are aware of your surroundings. Distance yourself from anybody that could be a threat to your freedom. And just stay out the way, man. You like it's nothing wrong with being behind the scenes. Stop making these officers' jobs so easy, man. Matter of fact, speaking of making their job easy, Instagram has a new policy whereas as long as the app is on your phone and you running it on your phone, it's on your device, that could infiltrate anything in your phone, meaning they can go through I iCloud, pictures, uh, uh, text messages, uh, uh, get passwords, old cats from your browsing. And oh yeah, and they can listen to your conversation on and off the phone. So that means you could just have your phone like just sitting next to you, not using it, no nothing. They could chime in on your conversations. Now that should let you know already what's going on. And my question is this: Why are they invading our privacy so much? What is it that they need to invade our privacy so much about? But that's another topic for another day. That's that's separate. And trust me, it's very real. Perfect example. A lot of people, they don't think it's real until they're in courtrooms. And them same people are telling you, like, yo, we got this recording, that recording, this Instagram, these pictures. Matter of fact, um, if I'm not mistaken, Casanova, he's going through that same situation right now. So I should tell you, they, they, they went in his DMs, uh, his iCloud. They seen pictures in his phone, text messages, phone calls, the whole nine yards. So, like I said, these are things you need to be aware of. You're going to be in the streets, man. Do your homework. Don't just be out here blind because guess what? When you get hit with that time, you're going to feel it. This young boy got 17 years at the age of 22. For what? And it was his fourth drug, um, drug conviction. So, let that be a lesson to some of y'all, man. Now, let's move on to lesson number two. Um, lesson number two, money or popularity? Yeah, I'm going to say that again. You want the money or you want the popularity that come with it? Now, this kid had actually, he like, he had something going, man. Now, I'm not glorifying the fact that he went and sold drugs, right? However, I am saying that if you're in the life, it's a certain way you're supposed to move. This isn't the 80s, the 90s where people are standing on street corners selling drugs. No, none of that. Like it done evolved And nowadays people are selling drugs Body parts, credit cards And the whole nine yards On the dark web Like Like You can literally go And get you a lung If you needed one On the dark web Like that's crazy But these are the times We are living in Now It was said that Wyatt and his crew Sold these pills On the dark web All across the United States All from the comfort Of just their home and to put you, matter of fact, because a lot of y'all may not even know the type of money they probably was making. I'm gonna put you into perspective. This is the same. This story right here reminds me of the math PhD student by the name of Stefan Camano, who made forty-four million dollars by selling fake Xanax pills through the dark web. 
When y'all get a chance, y'all can check that um that story out. It's on YouTube, right? And he actually didn't get caught in the commission of the crime. He actually got caught because he would mail the fake pills out. And it was so many packages that he was mailing out in his area that the mailman who had that route started complaining. And then what happened? The police started investi- um, investigating. And that's what led to his arrest. So literally, this guy made $44 million all in the comfort of his home in Illinois. Let that sink in the type of money that you could be making literally by just sitting in your house on the dark web. Now back to Wyatt. Um, Wyatt became a target as he started posting on Facebook and Instagram. Um, He's showing his lavish spending, his designer clothes, the Lamborghinis. They got him in videos dumping money all over cars. He's seen chilling with beautiful women. Just everything that he should be keeping to himself. Like, I'm unsure the amount that he actually netted, but the way he was flashing, I'll assume that he was making a whole lot of money, right? Now, at first, I was sitting there and saying to myself, why would he even start flashing and doing all the excessive stunning all over the internet? But then I realized that the kid was only 22 years old. So that kind of explains it all. He ain't know no better, and that's the generation that we're actually living in today. So you got a lot of guys that actually indict themselves time after time on the internet. So that brings me to this question. Do you want the money or do you just want to be popular? Some of you really just want to be popular. Else not, y'all wouldn't do the stuff that you actually do on the internet. And that's just it. I know if it was me to be making money illegally or whatever in the street, the last thing I would want is for somebody to know what I'm actually doing or to even hint that I'm doing something that I'm not. Supposed to be doing And That's basically it I mean I mean, quiet is kept A few dudes from the hood right Been getting real money in the street Since the 90s and the 80s right And they haven't seen a jail cell to this day And the fact of that Is that they don't have a social media Like on the flip side They don't have a social media And they don't ever want one They barely take pictures And these are the guys that actually last like these are guys that last These are ones that you don't see too much But in your neighborhood you know them So rule number two man Just make sure you know what you want Do you want the money or do you just want to be popular Just know that being popular Usually comes with a price You either going to be a target from the streets Or you're going to be a target for the police So you choose Now let's move on to lesson number three Lesson number three right When is enough ever enough now, one of Albert Einstein's most famous quote goes as this. He said, to do the same thing over and over, expecting different results is a form of insanity. Now, as I saw that earlier in the video, this was Pasek's fourth drug conviction. Fourth. And with that, my thing is this. When is enough enough? When was he going to say this isn't working for me? I should try something else. And just do something else Now I'm a strong believer of Catching signs And I feel a lot of times God sends us signs right And I operate according to the signs That the universe gives me on a daily I personally feel a lot of us have that power But we tend to go against it Whereas When we doing something Or have the thought of doing something And we get that little gut feeling in our stomach You know that little You know that little feeling that little feeling, a lot of us tend to ignore it. And that's you ignoring the signs that the universe is giving you to make a certain decision on whatever it is you're doing. Now, see, like, that's a topic that's that, that <laughs> that's a topic that I don't want to get into right now, matter of fact. I'm going to save that one for another video. But I'm going to just correlate it to this. Have you ever been rushing out the house and you thought you had everything and when you left some? You had that feeling in your stomach that you left it, but you chose to, you just chose to ignore it. Then when you actually got somewhere, you realize, yo, damn, I left my keys or I left my wallet or whatever. Because guess what? You ignored that gut feeling. I do it all the time. Trust me. Now, let's get back on topic, man. Don't be this guy. If something isn't working for you, that's a sign that you need to move on to something else. And a lot of us sometimes are afraid of change. But that same thing that you are afraid of, 
can be helpful for you in the long run. Sometimes change could actually be better than your current situation, but you will never know because you are actually afraid to change. And this is a prime example of someone who time after time was caught and still decided to do whatever he wanted to do. And as a result, he was given a harsher sentence to make him actually sit down and think. Now he actually got time to sit down and think about his decision. Yeah, 17 years worth of time. And it looks sad to me that he was trying to do like he was trying to impress social media, man. Sad as it sounds, he was just trying to impress social media. And that's the time we're living in. We got regular citizens feeling less of because they get on social media and see people living their best life. But I'll be the first to tell you that a lot of that stuff is just smoke and mirrors, man. And a lot of nine to fivers I know actually live better than some of these guys that you see on social media stunting. Like, that's just real talk. You might see a guy, he, he pulling the car, it's probably a renty. Or it's probably in somebody else's name. It's probably not even his name. This, like, this, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors on social media. And I feel that a lot of us that are regular citizens, they go on social media. And a lot of these people are, are, are depressed. This is why mental health is at an all-time high right now. Because people are watching social media and feeling down about their situation. They don't know, like, it's a process. You don't just come up overnight And a lot of people that actually are successful It was a process But nobody's going to show you The The the, the process Nobody's going to show you the L's They're just going to show you the W's Like that's And this is why I got to admire certain people right Like Derek Grace for example He's, he's like a, you know He's an influencer Self made dude Millionaire but on his own He's not afraid to show you that even though he make videos, he's not afraid to show you that, yo, listen, I take W's, but I also take losses as well. You see what I'm saying? The lifestyle is not just going to come to you, man. You got to work for it. But at the end of the day, if you just keep sitting here and you seeing people winning or what you think is winning on social media and you think that that's what it is, you just... It's, it's not what it is, man. A lot of people resort to things like crime or, or, or whatever it is, trying to chase that fast money just so they could keep up with the Joneses. So my thing is this. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. I mean, learn when enough is enough and just be yourself. If not, the universe have a way of humbling us and showing us what's really important in life. All right. Now, last but not least, let's continue on to the next lesson. Now, lesson number four, y'all, right? Last but not least, is it really worth it? Yeah, lesson number four, is it really worth it? Now, it sounds cliche, it sounds straight to the point, but this is what it is sometimes. As y'all know, I always tell y'all about my experiences because I rock with y'all. So if you follow this channel, you know that I've been incarcerated myself before. And one thing I realized while I was incarcerated was probability. Right, probability, the probability factor. I kind of came up with this own, like my own theory, because I realized a few things that the typical person in the street don't realize, and it was mind-boggling to me. Because me, I've always been the type to go all in whatever it is that I'm doing. So the streets was no different, and that's what what I went all in with, right? But every day you be out there trying to run it up, run it up, run it up every day. So I finally got sat, sat down and forced me to sit there and think about everything I've been through. And one thing I noticed was that I was doing it wrong from the beginning. And when I say that, it means this. People in the street, you don't realize what's going on when you out there because you're just in it and everything is going so fast. But look, there's 365 days in a year. So out of those 365 days, you expect to break the law 365 times and not get caught at least once, right? You see where I'm going with this? It does not add up. It just doesn't make sense. And a lot of us don't pay attention to that because we're blinded by the money, the women, the cars, just the lifestyle, period. And that's going, I'm, I'm going to leave it there because at the end of the day, I think this is a lesson that we all need to lead, um, learn and lead by. Lesson number four, is it really worth it? Sometimes you got to sit there and evaluate what's really important to you and what's important to your lifestyle. If not, you can end up like this man and doing 17 years in jail just at the age of 22. 
Alright, so I'm going to leave that there, y'all. As always, I hope you guys learned something from at least one of the lessons so your destiny don't end up like this kid right here. Now, let's recap all the lessons that we went through. Lesson number one, distance yourself away from anybody that is too loud. Lesson number two, money or popularity. Make your choice. Lesson number three, when is enough actually enough? Lesson number four, is it really worth it? As always, thank you guys for checking out the video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. Now, Anonymous Gang, we are growing day by day. If you're not subscribed, quit playing with yourself and join the latest gang on the tool. As for now, as long as you guys keep on watching, I'm going to keep on dropping, and I'm out. So, lesson number four, right? Is it really worth it? Now, as y'all know, I always tell y'all about my experiences because, you know, that's why I got the type of relationship with Oh yeah. Right having signs And usually when you have a sign Somebody tell you to do Like you know a bit Oh shit